Mandibuzz is pretty popular competitively as a support role, and it's got some all around good defensive stats to allow that. But what if we went all out offensive sweeper Mandibuzz on the special side with its laughable 55 special attack? While the element of surprise helps, it's also got some surprise tech with its ability Weak Armor, which drops its defense by one stage when hit by a physical attack, but then doubles our speed. We toss on a weakness policy, which also doubles our special attack when hit by a super effective move, which we can live because of our natural bulk. We can then nasty plot to boost our special attack even further, and stab coverage with Dark Pulse along with Air Slash now hits extremely hard. We can even get some help with common counters with Heat Wave, and Mandibuzz is definitely not supposed to be ran like this, but it can actually go kind of crazy. All right, look, everybody's gangsta until you pull out the full-on attack mode offensive Mandibuzz. And today we're going to be trying to push that 55 special attack to the absolute limit. This thing has always worked really well as a support role, but it's way more fun trying to get weakness policy and weak armor to get some shenanigans going. And if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. Alright, so first thing to note, my opponent has a pretty extreme team. They have freaking Fluttermane, they got the King Gambit, there's Iron Treads, and they have Sticky Web Support with a Galvantula. So, as I toss out the main dude, Bastiodonathan, I figure I'm just kind of here to set up my Stealth Rock. I'm not necessarily worried about the Sticky Web long term because I do have uh, Rapid Spin in the form of Blastoise, so I'm like, just gonna go ahead and let him spray his webs all over the place. And we're gonna do the classic Hazard trade-off as I'm able to set up my Stealth Rock. So. In this situation, I don't have a whole lot that wants to come in on the Galvantula. My main special sponge is Blastoise, and of course I do want to try to maintain that thing's health, being able to Rapid Spin later. So I'm just going to stay in and go for a Heavy Slam. I feel like it's in my best interest to try to break a Focus Sash here. A lot of the time, these freaking spiders, they're going to be Sash leads. And I do actually, in fact, get fully paralyzed after a Thunder Wave, which is just rude. Because it's like, listen, I'm slow anyway, man. Let me just... Let me do my thing over here. I'm just going <laughs> to try to slam him again as they actually go for the thunder and do miss. So we're not making a whole lot of progress here, but I do break through the para. And honestly, the resisted heavy slam does a solid chunk. We are about heavy as hell over here. Donathan built like a damn refrigerator and we've been eating good out here. So they actually do connect on a thunder and uh, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. This is also a sturdy set with a custap berry. So if I can get myself into that pinch range for the custap to get an attack off, I'm fine with that. But in general, I'm just kind of using Bastiodon to uh, <laughs> try to take care of this damn spider. I do get fully paralyzed once again and it also puts me just out of range for my Custap Berry to activate and that is kind of unfortunate but honestly the Bastiodon's not gonna go, it's not gonna do super well for the re remainder of this matchup. So I just decide to stay in. They finish me off with one more Thunder sadly and uh, while we do go down at least I was able to set up my Stealth Rock and we got this thing chipped to the point where it should be pretty easy to take care of. So this team consists of two setup sweepers, one of them being Vikavolt, the other with the Mandibuzz. And I figure Mandibuzz obviously doesn't come in here unless I Terra. So I decide this is actually a pretty decent opportunity for me to bring in the slow ass bug. Knowing that I can take any attack this wants to throw at me, I can then go for an agility. They are going to knock me down to a round half, but after an agility, Vikavolt is honestly quick as hell. Like this thing friggin' should be. I'm telling you, it's an electric bug. I don't care if it's based off of a, a rail gun or whatever. It should be fast. Moral of the story. So at least now I am faster with that agility. Our speed is doubled and I can then finish this thing off with a bug buzz, which is amazing because that's actually going to activate the throat spray. So that now gives me a plus one to special attack. I am now faster than everything on their team. I believe even Fluttermane. Here's your fun fact of the day. This timid Vikavolt is faster than a timid Fluttermane, both with max speed. I actually sit at 208, where that thing is at 205. However, this asshole comes in and it does in fact activate the Protosynthesis speed boost, and that is just gonna rain on my parade, because with that speed boost, it's actually, yeah, definitely gonna be faster than Vikavolt, and that is sad, because while I do have the ability to switch into potentially Blastoise here, I just figure as Shadow Ball, having to take two is going to be wildly unfortunate. So I stay in, and uh, they do kill me with a Mystical Fire. I definitely should have just gone into Blastoise, and that is unfortunate. So Vikavolt not going to be Volting any fools today. However, now at least I can go safely into Blastoise. I was reluctant to bring it in just because uh, I know I want to try to save it for the Rapid Spin potentially, and just maintaining this thing's health is kind of the most important thing. So... Uh, the good news is, though, at least I am Assault Vest, so I can take I can take attacks from this thing for sure, as they do actually have the coverage with the Energy Ball. This thing's got all the damn coverage 
under the freaking sun out here. But thick ass Blastoise is actually able to take it super nicely and then start to chip this thing with a surf. So I don't really have any other choice than to just go for another surf here. I figured they probably energy ball again. Uh, but it looks like they actually expected a switch and they go for the mystical fire. Now it does drop my special attack. So it's able to live another surf, which is annoying, but uh, at this point I know that uh, I can take another attack here and then finish it off with a flip turn. So they now just decide to go for the moon blast. I am able to live anything it can throw at me regardless. And that's going to take care of the flutter main, which is great because that's the most broken Pokemon in the damn game. And uh, we're feeling pretty good about that. So with Blastoise being tucked back for later, I want to potentially be able to rapid spin. But then as I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what? Mandibuzz actually comes in here and potentially starts to set up and has a win con here. And plus, we don't care about the sticky webs when we're flying above it. So, as I go into the Mandibuzz here, they do get the switch initiative and being able to bring in whatever they want against me. And as they go into Grimmsnarl, I'm actually kind of fine with this. I figure it probably just wants to set up screens. And that is going to give me an opportunity to set up myself with a nice little nasty plot. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Think some nasty shit out here. You would not last a minute inside the brain of this Mandibuzz. So they actually end up switching into the Iron Treads, which is fine by me. I'm able to grab the free Nasty Plot, which is definitely necessary to do some damage. And I do actually have the coverage on the Steel types with the Heat Wave. So while they do have the Ice Spinner, it is going to do a little chunk, does less than half. But most importantly, that's actually going to set me up even better. Because not only do I get my weak armor, which now doubles my speed, I also get the weakness policy, which is actually going to give me an extra sharp boost to the special attack. And now Heat Wave is going to be a full-on one-hit KO against the Iron Treads. And that is actually amazing. That is the, that's the ideal turn, being able to take an attack, weakness policy, and weak armor. And we are fully set up out here. So... Now they decide to go into the Glamora, and while Glamora is quick, it is not faster than my flappy bird ass over here, and uh, with that weak armor, we're looking pretty solid. So even with all of the boosts that I have, I'm still afraid of this thing not being able to kill stuff, because it's not supposed to be a special attacker. That's kind of the situation with the with the Mandibuzz here. But I'm just going to go ahead and commit the Terra Dark, mostly just because I don't have really any reason not to. Nothing else in the back really cares to Terra here. I can outspeed. And a Terra boosted plus four special attack Dark Pulse is going to take care of the Glamora, which is absolutely amazing. Even if it was Sash, we had the Stealth Rock up there to break it, which is great. And uh, now they decide to go right back into Buff Goblin over here. Goblin on these nuts, it is going to be able to take an attack, which is unfortunate. But the good news is I should be able to live anything this thing wants to throw at me. That's the good thing about Mandibuzz being, you know, semi-naturally bulky. So... They're actually just going to go for the light screen there. Good play because now that's going to kind of dampen, you know, what we're able to do with the Mandibuzz. And uh, it does live the Air Slash there. But one of the more fun things about uh, being a Dark type is that this thing actually cannot go for Prankster moves against me. So while it would have something like a Parting Shot, a potential Taunt, it can't really go for that. I do actually miss the Air Slash, which is annoying. But now they go for the Taunt, and that does not affect me. We cannot be Taunted out here, <laughs> which doesn't really matter because... I'm not going to be clicking any more Nasty Plots regardless, but one more Air Slash does take care of the Grimmsnarl, and this is the, the tactic with Mandibuzz. Being an offensive Mandibuzz, nobody expects this thing to set up and go crazy, so now they're going to go into their final Pokemon, which is going to be the King Gambit. So while I do have the super effective Heat Wave, I'm thinking, you know, a Sucker Punch is still kind of scary, but then I'm like, you know what, I might as well uh, just go for a Heat Wave regardless. If they do Sucker Punch, I think I can take at least one of them. Uh, and I would love to get the Heat Wave off. So they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra. They're going to go Terra Flying, uh, likely just to not be weak to the Heat Wave anymore. So they put the balloons on the head, but it's not going to be a fun birthday party because as I go for the Heat Wave, behind the light screen, not going to do a whole bunch of damage, but I do actually get the burn, which is hilarious because with that burn, I'm now able to live the Iron Head. And while that does activate weak armor once again, the defensive drop is just going to be mostly annoying because now a Sucker Punch with my minus two defense should be able to kill me. But with this thing being burnt, I've kind of gotten it to the point where we've got this bitch checkmated. And <laughs> as I know they're going to Sucker Punch here, there's really no reason for me to attack. So I'm like, you know what? I could just nasty plot here. They do Sucker Punch. It is going to fail because I'm going to set up. <laughs> and uh, I, Theoretically, I could do this all day until the burn kills it. But, I mean, it's just kind of a, a coin flip on what they're going to click. But it turns out 
They're actually just going to click that power button on the Switch because they are sick and tired of the Manda Buzz nonsense, which I think is always fun when people... It's one thing if they run from the match when, obviously, you don't, do not have a win con, but to just fully turn off your game is always hilarious to me. And Manda Buzz doesn't have that, that effect often, but today it did. So that is what we like to call a common Manda Buzz W, and uh, that's going to bring us into game number two, which is against... Another extremely scary team. There's always just the wildest of threats, and we're going to jump into it. All right, so this guy's going to go ahead and lead off with the Cleaver. Kind of to be expected, as the Stone Axe is a pretty standard lead. Generally kind of expect this thing to be like a Choice Scarf variant. Not exactly sure what it wants to do. But I do know that the Bastiodon can take an attack here and guarantee I get up the Stealth Rock of my own. So, turn one, they actually end up going for the Trailblaze, which is actually quite bad, because... Not only does that give this thing a nice little speed boost, it is going to put it in a spot where, of course, now my Sturdy is broken. And these things will have the coverage with a close combat to just knock me out here. So, while I have the option of going for the Terra, I don't want to burn it too early. And I let him just beat the hell out of my freaking shield face. And with a crit, it doesn't really matter. That thing is just going to knock my ass out. So, that is kind of scary. Bastidon does go down. I do get the Stealth Rock up. However... It was probably not worth. So at this point, I have a decision to make, and this thing has plus one speed, so it's quite scary. Now, I could have gone into the Blastoise, who I know can take at least one attack from this thing, but I do want to try to conserve how much health the Blastoise has, as it does look pretty important as kind of a defensive support here. So I decided to go into the Ambipon, mostly just because a fake out, especially after a defense drop, can do a nice little chunk here, and I should be able to take an attack here. Now, here's the plan. I figure... The only thing that knocks me out is a close combat on their end, and if I can go ahead and predict that correctly, going for the Terra Ghost, they just punch right through me, and then Ambipom can um, start to pressure this thing a little bit more. So, I do go for that Terra, we're gonna go full on dead monkey on them, and uh, hoping that basically the close combat comes through here. They also have not gone for the Stone Axe, I know they want to pri prioritize that Stealth Rock going up, and that's exactly what happens, they are just gonna Stone Axe instead. Which, luckily I am able to live, but it is unfortunate because that does a nice little chunk to Ambipom. And the only thing I really have to hit this with is a knockoff. Really hoped that that was going to be able to kill, and it freaking doesn't, which is <laughs> annoying. So, ordinarily I would save the Ambipom here, but they just have a lot of threats that uh, don't really care about priority fakeout. So, I just instead let this thing go down, and uh, as I'm sitting here with four mons left, I probably should have just gone Blastoise early here, and... Uh, Rest in peace, Pepto Monkey. So, I do go into Blastoise finally now, who is gonna have to take an attack from this thing, but at least I can guarantee that uh, friggin' Cleaver will not be hurting anybody else today. So, I just decide to go for a flip turn, just on the chance that they are gonna switch and try to conserve the Cleaver. They do have the rocks up on their side, so they definitely just go for another Stone Axe. They do not miss. It seems like every time I click Stone Axe, it friggin' misses, but uh, they do connect, knocks me down below half, and uh, Blastoise now no longer functions that well as a check to things like the Great Tusk, and uh, it is what it is. So, as I finish it off with the flip turn here, I now get a free switch into the Mandibuzz. So, Mandibuzz is in a spot where, while I do take some Stealth Rock chip, it is going to be kind of on for it because they can just bring in whatever they want, and this thing needs to take a physical attack to be able to get that weak armor to allow it to be faster than things. But, Mandibuzz does look really good in this matchup, and I do want to try to conserve that and make it happen. So, unfortunately, they actually just decide to go into the Electrode, as kind of expected. It was going to be, you know, either the Electrode or something like the Great Tusk that tried to rapid spin away the Stealth Rock. But, as they go into Electrode, that kind of sucks, because now I'm basically forced to switch in to the Vicabolt. So, I know that I can take a Thunderbolt here, and the situation is... I can actually probably take one more, and it's kind of a it's kind of a weird spot here, right? Because as I can go for an agility, it depends on what this electrode is. Now, I know that I should be able to take one more T bolt, as of course they outspeed. I do live it with five HP, which is amazing. And now we got we're the most agile damn bug out here because with that agility, if this thing is modest, I outspeed. If it's timid, it outspeeds me by a few points. And I figure a lot of these things are modest because they don't need that much speed, but this one is going to be freaking timid max speed, and that does take care of the Vicavolt. So, not going to lie, pretty shit start on my end, and a lot of misplays. But, when you have Amanda Buzz, there is a way. So, <laughs> I do not have a whole lot of answers left. They have very scary mons back there, like a Sneasler, they have a Great Tusk, they have an Iron Crown, and I have an Ugly Ass Fish, who... Does have some pretty hard-hitting fangs, though. Now, luckily, of course, I can outspeed being Choice Scarf, 
and that does take care of Electrode, which is honestly great because that's a big threat to my Mandibuzz, and I'm gonna try to set that thing up the best I can, so. Now on the Revenge Switch, they go Iron Crown, and of course I'm locked into the Psychic Fangs, and I do want to conserve this thing because I can uh, do some pretty good stuff to things like the Tusk and a Sneasler later if it doesn't have Unburden, so I'm just gonna go ahead and switch right into Blastoise, who had big plans today, but instead is just gonna be used as freaking death fodder, as they actually go for the Volt Switch, which is kind of fine by me because while that does kill the Blastoise, of course we do get to see what they want to switch into, and then I can get a matchup, and I just mainly hope that it's gonna be something that I can uh, try to set up the Mandibuzz with. So, the team composition of mine, it really feels like Mandibuzz is like a defog defensive user, and that's kind of what we're gonna play on. So, I have two Mons left, and while Bruxish does look good against the Great Tusk, I feel like in the long run, it's in my best interest to go into Mandibuzz here. So, here's the thing. I really feel like Great Tusk probably goes for something like a Rapid Spin. I know I can take one attack here, so... I'm basically forced to go for the Nasty Plot. I need all the offensive pressure I can get, and uh, they do actually Rapid Spin. That is fantastic, because while that does give them a speed boost, and gets rid of the hazards, it more importantly now gives me the weak armor, doubles my speed, and actually should be faster than everything they have left now. And that's literally pretty much all I needed. I needed a nasty plot and a weak armor, and while sometimes it's hard to come by, we are out here able to find it. So now I can easily outspeed. I go for the air slash, it does not quite kill. However, they actually rapid spin again. Probably, honestly thinking that that's gonna kill me with my defensive drop, but it actually does not because Mandibuzz is defensive as tits out here, I'm able to barely hang on. And while this thing's at plus two speed, I'm at plus four, so I am still faster. And that second rapid spin, while they definitely thought that kills, I kind of thought it was going to as well, but we're able to hang on. And that's extremely important because with everything they have left, Mandibuzz actually has the matchup. And as they go into Iron Crown here, I'm thinking I can just literally Dark Pulse. I have, <laughs> have the Nasty Plot up. And I think that kills. I'm not entirely sure because calcs with this thing are weird as hell. But Iron Crown just gets absolutely destroyed by the freaking Dark Pulse. And we just spun that boy's head around in circles, which is hilarious. So with that thing gone, that's kind of one of the bigger threats. They do also have the Urshifu, who has the potential, I think, to have Aqua Jet. But guess what? As it doesn't have the priority, your ass is air slashed into Oblivion. And that <laughs> is a one-hit KO on, again, one of the scarier mons in the game. And the final Pokemon is going to be a, another friggin' scary guy with the, uh, the Sneasler, who, if it's a normal gem fake-out set, uh, can come in here and do some damage. And it all comes down to if it is, it is not. I'm able to outspeed, and an Air Slash actually takes care of that thing as well. I'm honestly just surprised that uh, I was able to connect on the Air Slashes. And that's going to be the end of the game. Honestly, there was a lot that came into play uh, lucky on my end, but we will <laughs> absolutely take it. And that is going to bring us into our bonus match number three. Listen, if you've stuck around this long, go ahead and leave a like on the video. You're obligated at this point, and let's jump into it. So, as I've found in the process of recording, Offensive Mandibuzz is way more fun than you'd expect. So, they're going to actually end up leading off with the Scizor here. I, of course, tossed out the Bastiodon, and I'm just going to do my thing. We know the plan at this point, and that's to get up some Stealth Rock. So, this thing actually goes for the Trailblaze which is scary because now I'm thinking he's going to do the literally exact same thing that <laughs> Cleaver did to me, and he's kind of even the same family. So they go for the Trailblaze there, gives him to plus one the speed, and now I'm thinking this thing has no reason not to sword stance. I am scared, but I can just go for a little bit of chip here. I'm not necessarily super worried about Scissor at this point as uh, Body Press is going to get me some nice chip, but the bad news is a close combat surely kills me here, and... They actually end up getting a little bit greedy. They're going to go for a second Swords Dance. How, how sharp do you need your damn scissors to be, is the question. So, as I get another Body Press, one more actually takes care of it, but surely they're going to knock me out with a close combat. Turns out, actually, they go for another Trailblaze, and that's not quite going to do the job. I don't know how smoked out Buddy is thinking that Trailblaze was going to kill, and that just basically means it doesn't have uh, the close combat, which is honestly fine by me. That just takes care of Scizor. Which, while it does, it kind of sucks, because I was kind of relying on that Scizor to be able to uh, activate my Mandibuzz weakness policy, and then I can get a nice little surprise heat wave on it. But that thing just goes down, and on the revenge switch, sadly, they go into bug number two, who is going to be the Heracross, which does reveal it's going to be a loaded dice set as the arm thrust comes through. Kills me with two hits, and it also gets this thing a nice little moxie boost. So, the good news, at least, about knowing that this thing is going to be running a loaded dice is that it's not going to be choice card, and that means... 
I can actually just go right into Bruxish, who is going to be faster, and I look pretty nice to them probably wanting to pin missile, but instead I take a nice little bite out of him, and we go ahead and waste that Moxie boot. So we got two bugs down at this point, and sadly they do have a dark type with the Meowskarata. So Bruxish, with our weird lips and teeth, are not going to be able to bite that damn thing, so I do have to switch out here. And honestly, this thing is kind of my best option to switch in my Mandibuzz, because if they go for anything like a U-turn or just a knockoff or whatever this thing wants to do, I know that I can take at least one of them with this, and then I can get that speed boost. But they actually end up making a nice little double switch, probably expecting the Mandibuzz to come in, as now they greet me with the Charizard. And I'm like, you are not the guy we wanted to see out here. It's like an awkward blind date, and Pebbles is freaking out of here. I, I really, I can't afford to be hit by special attacks. I definitely need that weak, uh, weak armor being hit by physical attacks. So I'm gonna save the Manda Buzz for later and I honestly have the best check to the Charizard imaginable, which is freaking uh, Assault Vest Blastoise. A flamethrower does absolutely nothing. And I know for sure they're not gonna stay in here. And it's likely that the, the Meowskarata comes back in here as I'm just gonna try to go for a nice little flip turn to get some momentum, see what they wanna switch into. Turns out it's gonna be the Walking Wake and this thing is scary. It's a little less scary when it's not on a Sun Team, but it is going to have that Protosynthesis uh, with the Special Attack Boost, and anytime there's a Walking Wake around, shit's going to go crazy. So I go for the Flip Turn, which now allows me a matchup, and as I'm looking at it, I don't have a lot of great answers to this, but I do have Ugly Fish, and Nigel, old female Nigel can come in here, and I can outspeed with the Choice Scarf. That's the good news about when it's not a Booster Energy Speed, and uh, looking at this with that Stealth Rock chip, I'm feeling like if I go for the Terra Psychic, I can actually grab a knockout with a Psychic Fang. So as I go for the Terra, the game just completely glitches out. And we're like underground right now. I don't know what the hell happened. We missed the entire animation. I've never seen this happen before. So I left it. <laughs> I left it in there. But moral of the story is I put the eyeball on my damn head. I outspeed with my Scarf. And a Psychic Fangs is just barely enough damage to knock out the Walking Wake, which is actually amazing. Listen, Strong Jaw Bruxish kind of goes crazy. This thing, it just always seems to do better than you expect. So, of course, this does draw back in the Dark Type Kitty, and I cannot attack this thing. I'm forced to switch, and I'm thinking, okay, last time they made the double switch, but I'm just going to go right back into the Mandibuzz. Whether you like it or not, Kitty, you're going to touch my bird, and I am going to get my weak armor to activate. So I bring this thing back in as they actually just go for the U-turn. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it does give us the weak armor. Defensive drop, but that double in speed is now going to set us in a position where, hey, we are pretty damn quick, and we're looking actually pretty nice with what they have left. Because at this amount of health, no matter even what they want to hit me with, I should be able to take one attack. And that's going to put me in a spot where I should also be able to nasty plot. As they go into Charizard, we know that this thing is heavy duty boots because it hasn't been taken. The Stealth Rock chip, um, but also it's going to end up going for the Terra Fire. They want as much damage as possible on the Mandibuzz here, and uh, the Terra Fire is just going to boost up a Flamethrower uh, as much as possible. But at this health, I'm still feeling pretty confident that I should be able uh, to take it as long as if it wasn't choice specs, that is. But we know we see the boots on the guy, and it does allow it to uh, go for the Flamethrower here. After our nasty plot, we're able to take that, honestly, super nicely. However, I do get burnt, which we're looking like a damn... We, somebody left the turkey in the Thanksgiving oven for too damn long. And luckily, we're not a physical attacker, though, so I'm kind of fine with that. As soon as this Mandibuzz gets that weak armor and a nasty plot, it's kind of, it's kind of rampage time for the bird out here, as... Uh, I'm just going to go for the Dark Pulse. They're actually going to end up switching back into the Meowskarata. And this is one thing that should be at least able to take a Dark Pulse as it is resisted. It does in fact live, but it doesn't really matter because I am just out here absolutely zooming. My, my wings are going slow, but I assure you this Mandibuzz quick as shit. So I do it in fact just outspeed here. I can now just go for uh, another Dark Pulse just because I don't want to miss. A, every other move I have on this thing can miss and it often does. So I just decided to go for another Dark Pulse as they're actually going to end up switching around a little bit. I imagine their main plan is probably to try to let the burn do as much damage as possible to the Mandibuzz at this point. Um, but it's, it's looking like I still got some turns in store for him. So as they go into the Annihilate, I do actually, of course, have the stab coverage with the Air Slash, and that just takes care of the Annihilate, which is always something you hate to see on the opponent's end, just because that thing is just never dies. But uh, it definitely dies today, and we'll take it. So they go back to Meowskarata as I'm thinking, okay, just I, I outspeed everything here, and I still have, what, two, three turns left of the burn damage? We're looking pretty damn healthy for 
a burnt bird on red. But uh, I just go for another Dark Pulse. And they end up switching again. They go back to the Charizard. Uh, he does come in safely, but uh, not safe enough because do two Dark Pulses is going to do the trick. And I have one more attack left in me. And the most important thing to note is that, that Meowskarada actually cannot come in safely anymore just because of that Stealth Rock. So as I finish off the Charizard with another Dark Pulse, this Mandibuzz has just blown the game wide open and we love to freaking see it. So that takes care of that. Sadly, however, I do take the 11 HP damage from the burn and we are going to go down. So, Mandibuzz, we salute your services here today, good friend. And luckily, with Meowskarada being their only Mon, all I have to do is just send in something to say, hey, how's it going? I hope you enjoy Stealth Rocks, buddy, because your feet are getting dug the hell into out here. And that is going to end up just being what takes out the Meowskarada. Monkey comes in being like, what is going on out here? And that's going to be the end of the game. So... I thought that was kind of just a ridiculous match. This team is just full of ridiculous stuff, but uh, it does actually work in certain conditions. So let me know if you guys did enjoy the video. I had a lot of fun with this one, and uh, I will catch you next time. Peace out.